Good morning. Welcome to the webinar. My name is Matthias Kunz and I'm a channel sales manager at Zimbra. I have with me Maulid Jumani, who is the marketing and sales director of ASICS. ASICS is a Zimbra VAR partner based in Tanzania. And in this webinar, we're going to show you some of the latest new integrations that are offered in Zimbra 9. And you'll obviously get the chance to know more about ASICs and what they do and offer to their customers as well. But before we start, just let me take one minute to remind you that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you next week. But please stay on mute while we present. However, feel free to ask all your questions in the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. And of course, we will take a few minutes as well at the end to answer all your questions. Now, Zimbra is the largest provider of open source and open core collaboration software in the world. Zimbra provides solutions to governments, service providers, educational institutions, as well as small medium businesses. And Zimbra solutions really enable the exchange of information through various tools, email contacts, calendars, tasks, document holders, chat, and video conferencing. The Zimbra Papa network is active and dynamic, and we have almost 2,000 partners worldwide. Local partners who speak your language and understand your culture. We offer messaging solutions in the form of licenses or cloud services that take into account the laws and regulations of your country of installation. And of course, there is a potential to evolve Zimra products through Zimlets and dedicated APIs. Here we see just a general presentation of the Zimbra solution. What to notice here is that the solution must be deployed on the Linux server and can also be accessed from a web interface where all the features are present, such as email, calendar, contacts, task management, chat, etc. This web interface is also compatible with all the main internet browsers on the market, such as Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. And the operating systems that can be used, obviously Windows or Mac OS. Zimba really is available from any device, whether it is a desktop or a laptop computer, a tablet or a smartphone, which allows you to have access to your emails from anywhere at any time. What allows this synchronization is a protocol called ActiveSync. And finally, Zimbra has, of course, external integrations with Active Directory, OpenLDAP, and Microsoft Exchange. But let's talk a little bit about who is ASICS. So I will now pass on the word to Maulet so he can give you a quick overview of ASICS. Maulid, yeah. the stage is all yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, all participants. I'm Maulid Dimanle uh, from ASICS Group Company uh, Limited. Uh, when you say ASICS, ASICS uh, is the IPT company uh, based in Tanzania. We uh, have uh, more than uh, 12 uh, years in the ICT industry. Our vision uh, is to become uh, leading a company uh, uh, in assisting African country, especially Tanzanian uh, potential uh, to, to realize the potential of the technology and the growth of the economy. This uh, was realized by providing the solution which we are providing to our clients. And the, our mission uh, is to innovate, simplified te uh, technology solution, uh, which uh, suits uh, African environment and the infrastructure challenge, especially in Tanzania. Next slide, please. Matthias, next slide. Sorry, Molit. Yeah. Should be fine now. Yeah, what we do uh, actually, uh, basically, ASICS as an ICT company, we have a list of products which we are doing. Oh, sorry. 
it went fast. See your slide, sorry. Yeah. This one is the right yeah. one, no? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No sorry. Yeah. So on the first side, we are doing open source email, uh, which is the Zimbra uh, product. We have a number of customers uh, in Tanzania and uh, in some of the other countries, as we are in uh, three countries current. So we are doing a domain registration and the hosting uh, for the domain registration. Actually, we have been registered with uh, Tiznik, uh, the register of the domain in Tanzania for the .tz. Also, we are doing ICT security system in the solution. We have number of ICT security. Uh, current, we have been uh, employed to uh, deploy to some of our client, uh, especially uh, in ICT uh, security. And we have number of uh, systems which we are doing. Some uh, we are doing as uh, resellers and some we are doing as uh, the distributors, including Ikram and the other software. We are doing a local area uh, network uh, connection and the configuration, including installation. And we have already done a number of the system uh, in, uh, in Tanzania with a big uh, client, including airport, uh, NHIF, BOT, and etc. Also, we are doing ICT consultancy and the training service uh, to some of the, our clients. And uh, we are doing supply also to various uh, office equipment and they have been a, a distributor in a number of years in some of the products. Why ASIC with the Zimbra? We are only distributors in Tanzania and the uh, Rwanda and the Burundi. Uh, we have uh, best product support as we have our local uh, technical team uh, based in Tanzania who are satisfied with the Zimbra. Our key statistics include the number of customers we do have. We have uh, over 150 plus customers uh, in Tanzania all over. And uh, we are doing a product and the service which includes uh, some of the products uh, and the service who are doing at the distributors and the resellers. We have been registered as distributors in more than uh, five uh, plus uh, products. We are in uh, three countries, uh, Tanzania, uh, Rwanda, and the Burundi, and we are doing uh, 15 uh, plus product uh, resellers. Next slide, please. I think this concludes your presentation, Maulid, right? Yeah, yes, it's yeah. Right, because today we want uh, most right. uh, participants to hear about uh, Zimbra. You can yeah, it. absolutely. No problem. I just wanted to make sure. So thank you very much, Maulid, for giving us an overview of ASICs. That was great. So let's talk a little bit more about Zimbra 9 now and introduce Zimbra 9 to you. And here it is really to know that whether you are working remotely from home or on the go and are counted on to deliver mission critical deadlines, Zimbra 9 really is the is the group there or the collaboration software that you should be looking at. So we're very, very happy to introduce Zimbra 9 because Zimbra 9 introduces a new modern user interface that is responsive and delivers the same experience on mobile devices, tablets, and desktops. So anytime, anywhere, and on any device, users will have a consistent Zimbra interface. Unlike competitors with closed platforms, Zimbra 9 is designed to be extensible, so small, Businesses, enterprises, governments, as well as service providers can integrate with the third party collaboration services they already use today. There's also a new Zimnet framework which allows customizations for users who need to meet geographic or industry specific requirements. And Zimlets are now even easier to build and deploy. But Zimbra 9 is also built with Zimbra's dependable server infrastructure, providing the security, privacy, and data sovereignty Zimbra customers have come to expect. This also makes the upgrade to Zimbra 9 very easy. So there's no migration. Current Zimbra users will be able to gain access to the new experience with an easy self-upgrade. And our professional services team 
is there to support you as well if you run into any issues. And to easy the transition and adoption of Zimba 9, your users will also have the option to toggle to the classic Zimba UI. And just like always, Zimbra 9 can be deployed on premises, in public or private clouds, or as a hosted service from Zimbra service providers in your own country. So I mentioned already, Zimbra has a new responsive user interface, which is a modern responsive user interface based on industry leading React based technology that adapts to the screen it's used on. So users can move seamlessly between desktop, mobile and tablet browsers while enjoying a consistent and easy to use email and collaboration experience. And of course, the layout changes based on the size and capabilities of the device. So for example, on a phone, users would see mail view in a single column view. A tablet will show the same content in two columns and desktops have three columns. But the, fact, but the functionalities don't diminish with a smaller screen size, except for some intentionally avoided functionalities like the email advanced composer. The mobile screen supports all advanced functionalities that the web or tablet supports. And of course, there are third party integrations. And Zimra 9 is specifically designed for extensibility and features best in class out-of-the-box integrations with Slack, Dropbox, and Zoom. And many other integrations are underway. Zimbra is fully committed to creating a collaboration ecosystem that allows small businesses, enterprises, and other organizations to utilize services they use day-to-day -day, instead of being forced to use or pay for services they don't use. So this really means for you that you can break free from the closed systems of Microsoft and Google and use the apps that you have already invested in. Zimbra's nine, Zimbra 9's new Zimbra framework also allows for customization, flexibility ranging from high-end collaboration to simple business email, exclusive and custom features can be delivered using the new Zimbra 9 Zimlet framework. For Zimbra administrators, deployment and enablement continues to behave as it has in the past. And customers across a range of regions and market sectors can easily customize Zimbra to meet their unique geographic or industry requirements. And of course, documentation and training will also be available. Zimba 9 allows also end users to easily toggle, as I mentioned before, between the new modern UI as well as the classic Zimba UI. So this will ease adoption as end users get accustomed to the new interface and minimize help desk calls. And the toggle will be available at login as well as in Zimba preferences. And there are more customization options just like previous versions of Zimbra and the classic UI, you can customize the look and feel of the modern UI for your organization's needs. So you can customize, for example, the logo and app icons, top navigation bar to support integration with external sites, the login page, primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, favicons, the title, you can customize the text of a browser, Windows, Title, or the tab bar. And you can enable or disable forgot, password link for SSO enabled customers. You can customize the sidebar colors, link colors, header colors, etc. And there is a Zimbra branding guide, which will also provide more information on this topic. Now, another very important feature is, is Zimbra, Zimbra's dependable server infrastructure. Zimbra 9 runs Zimbra, Zimbra's dependable server infrastructure, providing the security, privacy, and data sovereignty Zimbra's customers have come to expect, and actually in many cases require. 
So there is an easy upgrade. There's no migration needed as mentioned already and users can expect an easy upgrade process moving from Zimbra 8 to Zimbra 9 with no data migration needed. As usual, Zimbra will provide the documentation, tools and professional services to support the upgrade process. And just like always, Zimbra can be deployed on premises in public or private clouds or as a hosted service from Zimbra service providers in your own country. But first, I'd like to take a moment and talk about features. So, for example, features that Google has and features that Microsoft has. So we know that Microsoft and Google offer products bundled in a collaboration suite. Google calls their product G Suite and via that product, they offer their email product known as Gmail. Calendar, Google Drive, Hangouts and lesser known products as Google Forms and Google Sites. Microsoft offers a similar product, a collaboration suite called Office or Microsoft 365, which has email, calendar and products like Teams, OneDrive, Skype, as well as lesser known products like Microsoft Forms and even SharePoint for building corporate websites. Now, if Google has all that and Microsoft has, has all that, what is it that the Zimbra has? Today, I'm going to show you the latest simlets that are available on Zimbra 9. I'm also going to explain why integrations with existing applications in Zimbra 9 can help you grow your business. But before that, I'd like to take a moment and do a quick refresher about the Zimbra 9's modern UI. So last year, with the release of Zimbra 9, we introduced the modern UI. The modern UI is a responsive UI that is consistent on all your devices. It's important to remember that while on Zimbra 9, you have the modern UI, you can also use the classic UI, which is available by default. So what that means for you is that you can switch back and forth between the UIs by using the menus shown on the slide. Switching between UIs is seamless, so there's no need to log out and log in again. This, of course, is specifically useful for people that rely on Zimlets or customizations made for the classic UI that may not yet be available in the modern UI. So in conclusion, in conclusion should you upgrade to Zimbra 9, remember that Zimbra 9's backend is the same. The classic UI is included and all Zimlets that are available in Zimbra 8 still work on Zimbra 9, even if they are not made for the modern UI. One of the main advantages as well of using Zimbra is the ability to create integrations. This gives you a unique advantage in convincing your users to leave products like Microsoft or Google, for example. Now, you might be wondering why this is an advantage. Well, if you are already using a CRM system that you don't want to replace and you're only looking for a new email platform that offers more modern services, Zimbra 9 will certainly meet that expectation. And also, thanks to Zimbra's scalability, your partner will be able to create the integration with the existing CRM and thus offer, new offer a new platform with new collaboration features while keeping the existing application within your company. And let's also talk about, about another example here, where, for example, integrations can help. So if you present or if you represent a government agency, in many cases, you will need to submit a request for proposals for the acquisition of a new messaging system. In your request, you will need to establish your specific requirements. And I have found that in some cases, the requirements are very, very specific. In fact, they are so specific that previously, only Google or Microsoft could easily compete for a contract. However, with the scalability of Zimbra 9, we can now meet all the requirements equally well, combined with a low TCO, as the solution is much, much cheaper than the competitors. So we at Zimbra believe integrations are a key to success, and therefore we are proud to announce you our integration with Zoom 
And Zoom is a Zoom, as you know, probably is a video conferencing application that gained a lot of traction, especially during these COVID-19 times. It can now be considered and established. Uh, a, a, it, can, it can now be considered an established player in the conferencing market. And the benefits of using Zoom is that it supports a large number of concurrent users and that it is and that it is offered as a software as a service. This means you no longer have to set up or manage additional infrastructure. The integration in Zimbra makes it really easy to use Zoom right from within the Zimbra application. And we might even be able to show you that later during the demo. Jitsi is an, op it's an open source alternative to Microsoft Teams, Zoom or WebEx. Video, confer video conferencing with Jitsi is very easy. You just create a custom URL and invite participants to join your video call. There's no limit to the amount of users that can join. In addition, there are no additional costs to running Jitsi when run on premise. When you are in a video conference, you can share your desktop and chat with other participants. And Zimbra 9, of course, comes with a Jitsi Zimlet. The Jitsi Zimlet allows you to add a Jitsi meeting URL to calendar events you create in Zimbra. You can then send the event to all your participants. Please know that the participants do not need to have a Jitsi or Zimbra account. They only need a browser and internet connection to join. Rocket Chat is an open source alternative to Slack or Hangouts. It is a chat application made for team collaboration, DevOps, and customer engagement. Rocket Chat also offers an app for iOS and Android, as well as desktop apps. With the Rocket Chat Zimlet, you can integrate Rocket Chat into Zimbra. This allows you to automatically create accounts on Rocket Chat for all your Zimbra users and automatically sign them on as soon as they click on the Rocket Chat tab. Zimran also offers a Slack integration simulat. Using the Slack integration simulat is very easy and intuitive and allows you to easily start conversations with your coworkers using chat or video calls. The Slack integration works in a couple of ways. You can either hover over a user's name to see the user Slack availability. And now you can start a Slack conversation. And all you have to do is go to the more menu and click start Slack conversation. And Zimbra is great as well for working with files and documents. You still have at your disposal Zimbra Drive, Briefcase, and Zimbra Docs for working with your files. And we also added a couple of cloud storage simlets to Zimbra 9, so you can integrate with Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and Nextcloud. Using these third-party providers, you get additional benefits like having desktop and mobile sync clients. Also, as most of these are offered as a software as a service, you no longer have to worry about your storage. I can also attach files, directly from my Google Drive when I'm writing a new email message. I have two options to attach files from Google Drive. I just select one of the files from my Google Drive and attach them straight to this email. As easy as that, I fetched and attached a file from my Google Drive. I also have the option to share the file using a link in case I do not want to attach the actual file. The same works for Dropbox, OneDrive and Nextcloud. Now let's talk a little bit about the latest simlets that are available in Zimbra 9. Nextcloud, as already mentioned, is an open source alternative to Dropbox, iCloud, and Google Drive. So if you use Nextcloud, you can access your files anywhere on any device. Nextcloud offers apps on iOS and Android, as well as a desktop sync app. So you can combine Nextcloud with Zimbra using our Nextcloud simlet. This way, you can add additional functionality for secure communication. 
For example, you can share an attachment via a link. You can optionally set a password and or expiration date on links that are created by the next start simulator. So you can also increase your productivity with Simlet email templates, which is a Simlet used to create email templates. For example, if you need to send appointment reminders or invoices, simply create an email with placeholders and save it as a template. You can even store your templates in a shared folder. This way you can create uniform communications because everyone who has access to the shared folder can use the same template. This is very useful for your users who work in pairs or all users who always want to save more time. You can also use Google Translate Simlet to translate an email message right from within Zimbra. In a world where we tend to collaborate more and more with many countries, this feature could be very valuable to your users who may not be fluent in English or another specific foreign language, but who need to work with teams located abroad. And you can also create awareness by using the social justice simlet. The social justice simlet will suggest alternative words to use while the user is typing a new email. So for example, if the user were to, were to type the word blacklist, the social justice simlet would suggest to use the expression deny list. Simma 9 has many more simlets than you might think, and we won't show them all today, but we have put some of the most popular ones on this slide. The voice message simlet allows you to record a voice message directly from Zimbra. This way you don't have to type your entire message. Instead, you can send the recording to the recipient. Or use the simlet sticky notes to add a virtual sticky note to emails. This is specifically useful if you want to add a reminder to an email or use the Simlet signature template to provide a uniform signature for all users in your company. Finally, a list of available Simlets for the modern user interface can be found at wiki.simra.com. But you can also create your own Simlets. Recipes are available on wiki.simra.com and you can also contact our channel Evangelist so he can help you. The last topic of today's presentation is Elastic Stack. This is, an, is, this is an open source application that can be used to view statistics. So you can use Elastic Stack with Zimbra to get information about the well-being of your Zimbra platform. This will allow you to proactively evolve your Zimbra platform based on the needs of your users. You can also configure Elastic Stack to monitor whether your services are operational. It can even send you alerts if it detects downtime in your platform. And while Zimbra doesn't come with Elastic Stack out of the box, it can be added easily with the Zimbra Logger service. The Logger service is a part of Zimbra that runs on your server and records all the statistics you need in a CSV format. The CSV data can then be passed on to Elastic Stack, who can view it for you. I will now let Andrew run a quick demo of the key features of Zimbra 9. Thank you, Matthias. You're very welcome. Thank you. I think I need presentation rights. Okay. Maybe I can. Okay, got it. So, as uh, Matthias has been explaining, uh, some things about Zimbra and then using Zimbra 9. What I'm going to show you here is just really quickly what the user experience is like uh, within the Zimbra web client. So this is where effectively we can expose a lot of those integrations through Zimlets. It's where users can surface all the capabilities and features of Zimbra. But in terms of the, the overall user interface, uh, it's a very sort of easy to use, intuitive uh, UI. Uh, it's been updated to have a, a sort of modern uh, look and feel to it. So actually accessing the various applications is very simple. So they're just separated by the icons uh, at the top of the screen. So we obviously have a, an email client, so where I can review, create 
emails, send emails, receive emails, uh, create different um, folder structures, etc. We also have a calendaring application, uh, so a fully fledged uh, calendaring application where we can you know, create calendar events, uh, share calendars with other people. So you know, from a collaborative point of view. Uh, contacts, so I can create, you know, my own contact list within here uh, from uh, either contacts that I'm emailing, they can be automatically saved within here. But I can also access things like global address list, so all the users within my organisation. Uh, I can review and find users within, uh, within the global address list. And I can create my own personal distribution list within there. So in terms of file storage, and I'll, I'll look at these in a, in a little more detail, probably highlight some of the integrations that we've got. Um, so we've got various file storage options, as you say. So there is a built-in drive capability. So users can store and share and uh, collaborate with content directly from within their Zimbra mailbox. But uh, as we talked about earlier, there is also the ability to work with external services, things like Google Drive or Nextcloud, Dropbox. Etc. For chat services, uh, we have like a Zimbra chat mechanism within here. So again, I can communicate with my colleagues within my organization, have you know, structured um, chat conversations, either group chats or one-to-one -one chats within here. And again, we have integrations with things like Slack and um, Rocket Chat in this instance. So just to highlight a few of the, uh, the integrations or some of the things that we've changed within Zimbra, one of the things is how we handle attachments uh, has been improved quite significantly. So you can still preview attachments very quickly from within the mail client. So I can very quickly look at you know Word documents or PDF documents or PowerPoints and so on uh, within this environment directly from the mailbox itself so not having to download it to my desktop and open it up in a, a specific application uh, within here so it just means it's very quick and simple to, to use and to work with uh, zimbra has always had a very strong uh, capability in terms of search so the fact that we index essentially all the content uh, as it arrives into the mailbox you can very quickly sort through that um, uh, that data within your inbox and there's a lot of parameters that you can set up or, or utilize in terms of setting the criteria that you want to put in your search uh, search patterns so i can define you know from certain users to certain users i can look for specific attachment types uh, i can date bound things look at tags and so on so it's really about kind of organizing your data because the reality is, is that, you know, most users in you know, enterprises, governments, whatever, have very large mailboxes. So a lot of time is actually spent searching through content, historical content to, to uh, find the information that they require. So having that you know, very fast search capability is very useful. And the fact that you can save searches as well means that you can uh, effectively create virtual folders so anything that fits the criteria of a safe search then automatically becomes part of that, um, that search criteria so if, if i look at say um you know, some of the integrations that we've got so we talked about the fact that we've got integrations with things like google drive and dropbox so as i'm composing an email um i can actually directly access those third-party services from my Zimbra web client. So if I wanted to go and select a file uh, from my Dropbox environment, I can very quickly go in there. I can uh, you know, select the content that I want to add into my composed email and so on. And similarly, I mean, any attachment that I receive, I can store those back into those environments as well. So it's a, it's a two-way process. Similar kind of a, a scenario with Google Drive. So again, you know, I can, quickly access my Google Drive, select the content that I want to use uh, in my message composition. Uh, and it's, you know, it means that I've got a number of different options in terms of working with uh, the different content in there. But you also have the ability to look at things like, you know, these are attachments that I've been sent. Uh, 
via email. So I can very quickly go through here and just select content that has, I've received as a recipient and add those to my uh, composed email. I can obviously search through that content as well so I can find specific files and also things like images. I can you know, find any images that have been sent to me via email and include those in my mail uh, position here. So it just speeds up the whole process of being able to sort of put data together, collate the data, organize the data in, uh, in the accordion way. Now we talked about the fact that um, uh, things like some of the, like the Google Translate, uh, Simlet for instance. So what we're doing here is we're actually leveraging, you know, Google's APIs to be able to do a translation of this. So I can very quickly take an email here, which has been sent to me in French. No, I don't speak French. Uh, so I'll just quickly translate that. And it just gives me an, Im an immediate translation of that, um, uh, that email that I've received. So, you know, very useful tools. I mean, certainly my job, you know, I, I, I work uh, in territories where I don't speak the native language and I receive emails in different languages. So it's, it's very useful. So, Looking at some of the other applications, so we talked about calendaring. Calendaring is, is very much kind of the killer app within organizations these days. It's really where everybody organizes their day, you know, the whole day, weeks, months, uh, you know, are planned around their calendaring application. Now, I have calendar, my own calendar here, and I can have multiple calendars. I also have a shared calendar. So this user, David, has actually shared his calendar with me. So I see the events for his uh his his agenda i can create events on his behalf as well <clears throat> i'm going to create a calendar event i can just very quickly you know add a quick calendar <clears throat> event in there or i can add more details so yeah, i can put, change the start and end times i can put repetition in there in terms of you know repeating events and so on i can add locations i can um yeah, add other users it will obviously auto complete from the global address list as well <clears throat> and then the email contacts that i've got in there and a, an example of one of these integrations here so i don't actually have the zoom integration but i actually have uh, a webex integration so i have a webex account so i can very quickly uh, set up a meeting and create a unique uh, webex link for this meeting <clears throat> So now, now essentially it's going off to Webex, it's creating that meeting in one, my Webex account <coughs> and then giving me a, uh, a unique uh, URL for that meeting. So again, it's, it's about just sort of easing that whole collaboration process and being able to sort of create events very quickly using the, the choice of uh, video conferencing service in this case here that I want to use. So Zimbra is very much about <coughs> giving you the core capabilities and a lot of capabilities within its own application, but also being able to leverage um, other third party services that you either, you know, might use as a preference because it has certain features that you require, or it might be an investment that you've already made and you don't want to relinquish that uh, preference there. So just then looking at some of the other apps that we've got here, you'll notice down here, I've got a, um, a list of users so this is my chat service so i can quickly um, uh, have chat conversations with my colleagues uh, directly from within the, uh, the zimbra web interface and that remains sticky as i move across uh, so that chat window will stay open uh, as long as i'm you know while i'm moving between the different applications within zimbra when i actually go to the chat service itself then i get a full screen version of that Within the Zimba chat capability, let's say we can do peer-to-peer -peer or one-to-one -one chats, but we can also do group chats as well. Uh, so yeah, I have a sort of a sales engineering uh, team uh, here, so I can see the members of this team. We can have conversations and chats within here. We can share content as well, uh, you know, files and so on. And also we have the ability to set up what we call spaces. So this is where I can, yeah, essentially create unique uh, differentiated spaces where we can talk about particular subjects or projects and so on and within there I can also create additional channels so I can have sub channels uh, within this um, uh, chat service where it allows me to actually 
subdivide the conversations and people can you know freely join or, or leave those channels that have been invited into the, uh, the space itself uh, as a part of this uh, chat service we we do actually whilst you know we've talked about integrations with third-party video conferencing services uh, you can actually communicate over video uh, directly from within Zimbra and this is using you know Zimbra's capabilities within here so I can very quickly say okay I'm going to you know strike up a, a video conference with another user you can see me here Dave is not in so I know he's not going to answer but within here I've got the ability to you know share my video stream you know have audio conversations share the screen itself as well just close that off and again talking about some of the integrations so that's our own inbuilt chat and video chat capability uh, you know we can integrate with things like rocket chat as well uh, so again this is leveraging the um uh, the zoomlet technology and it just means again that you can access the content directly from within the zimbra user interface uh, but you are leveraging third-party services uh, to provide that, that that particular application but so it gives a much more seamless um, use user um, experience within that. the last thing I'll show we talked about file storage so you know I've shown you how we've integrated with some external services uh, but again Zimbra has its own internal capability of storing documents and files uh, within the Zimbra mailbox environment so with from here I can create folder structures I can place content in there, upload content. I can save content that I receive via emails uh, directly into here. Uh, and I, I can also share content directly from here. So if I share this particular file, I've already shared it with some colleagues here. So Corinne and Antonio, they have different access rights. So, you know, you can say whether they've got view, edit and edit and share rights within there as well. <clears throat> Or if actually I want to share content outside of my organization, then I can uh, use this ability to, to, to have a unique link uh, be, that, that be made public. Um, and I can also set passwords around that. So I could share that to someone, <clears throat> anyone outside my organization, but I still have an element of control in terms of uh, that content that I'm sharing in that you know, the, the link is unique. Um, the fact that I can revoke the link at any time and also I can put additional security around it in terms of passwords. Then the, the last thing that I'll talk about is um, uh, what we call Zimbra Docs. So Docs is our ability to actually work with uh, documents uh, directly again within the web browser and it means uh, you know, I you know, can edit documents in real time in the browser environment and if i'm collaborating in terms of i've shared this with another user a colleague we can edit this document uh, in real time at the same time so if they were editing as, uh, at the same time as i was i would see their updates being happening in real time on there so uh, it supports um it's actually based on an open source technology called LibreOffice, but it supports also um the standard microsoft um format so things like you know, word documents it will support uh, powerpoints and also spreadsheets as well so again you know you can work with all the typical uh, types of documents that you would expect to be able to you know use within an organization and this is all been this is all happening <coughs> directly from the browser and is all happening online so i think with that that probably is a good enough summary i'll i'll hand it back to you matthias Thank you so much, Andrew. That was great. Now, hopefully everybody can see my screen again. We had the demo. Let me just I think I need to share my screen again. Okay, hopefully, hopefully everybody can see my screen again now. Um, now, with that in mind, thanks for the demo again, Andrew. With that in mind, I just wanted to um give you a quick summary of what we have discussed and what maybe some few takeaway points um that that would you know be very very 
sort of helpful to kind of, you know, remain in your memory about Simra 9. And this is really that it provides everything you have always loved about Simra. So we still offer the lowest TCO in the industry. Simra is secure, private, and provides full data sovereignty. Simra never reads or sells your email. And of course, you can scale your Simra deployment from 10 to 10 million users with confidence. Simbra runs anytime, anywhere, and of course on any device. You can install it on-premise, in a public or private cloud, or choose a hybrid deployment. So your options really are wide open with Simbra. And as you know, the open source is in our DNA, and we continue to use open source apps. Simbra 9 will have an open core, and licensed Simbra customers will have access to the code. With that, in with, with having said that, I would like to open it up now for Q and A, um, and see if there are any questions that have not been answered. Um, so everybody has the opportunity now to to put questions. Who hasn't done that yet in the chat? So we'll just give. One or two more minutes for everyone to post questions. Can't see the chat, Mariama, for some reason. Can you? Yeah, I'm. I can see. I can see the chat and Q and A, and very there is no questions. All right. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, um, we are always here. So we're just one email away or one call away. Please call us if there are any questions or reach out to ASICs. And um, with that, I want to thank everyone for attending the webinar and um, everyone that presented. Of course, Maulid and Andrew. Um, thanks for organizing this, Mariama. And wish everybody a nice remainder of the day. Thank you again and bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.